everyone, welcome to example four. We're at joint variation. So this is going to be when we start combining direct and inverse variation, or maybe a few direct, a few inverses, all depends on the wording of the problem. So now we're gonna let M and N be real numbers, and we will say Y varies, y varies jointly as the nth power of X and the nth power of Z, if for all x and z there exists a non-real number k such that y is equal to, there's our constant of proportionality, but now we have x to the n and z to the m. So you'll see we have three variables this time out. And that's what we refer to when we say we're, we're varying jointly. It's more than one variable. And for this particular equation, I gave you direct variation. If it doesn't specify inverse, you can assume it's, they're both direct but we will start combining them even as soon as example four. So I just wanna take note that in the expression y varies jointly as x and y, it translates to the product of y equaling kxz. The word and does not in indicate addition here. So I, I don't want you to think it indicates addition. It's just talking about two quantities varying directly on y. All right, so let's take a look at example four. It says a quantity x varies directly with the square of y and inversely with z. If x equals 40 when y equals 4 and z equals 2, find x when y equals 10 and z equals 25. All right, so that's a bunch of information, and that's all fine and good, but let's take a look for buzzwords. The first thing I would pick up is directly, and then I hear square of y. I also have inversely and z. So I have three variables in this problem, right? We have x, y, and z. So we'll be looking for ordered triples in this problem as opposed to ordered pairs. And I can see a triple right here. I see 40, 4, and 2. So I have one ordered triple, and then I have an incomplete ordered triple. I don't know x, y is 10, and z is 25. So I'll put a question mark, 10, and 25. All right, so let's go ahead and try and do this in a step-by-step -step process. So the first thing I want to do is write the general relationship for these variables in equation form. So if I take a look at this, x varies directly as the square of y. So I will say x is varying directly as the square of y, all right? But it also says, and inversely with z. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide out by z because again, whenever you see direct variation, that implies multiplication. Whenever you see inverse variation, it implies division. And this says square of y, so I will make sure to square y. And I will be mindful of squaring y throughout the rest of this problem. All right, so step two in solving these variation problems is to substitute the given values of the variables and find the value of k. So again, I have a complete ordered triple and I have an incomplete one. Yet, let's use the complete ordered triple I'm gonna plug in 40 for x, four for y, two for z, and let's see what we get back out here. So I will get 40 is equal to k times four squared over two. All right, so as I start to solve this, I am looking at 40 equaling, okay, so four squared is 16, 16 divided by two is eight, so this is eight k, that's gonna tell me k is equal to five. All right, so I have my k value. Now let me scooch this up a bit. So I have some room to work, okay. So once I'm there, I'm going to substitute this value of k back into the equation I found in step one. So as we go through this, I'm gonna say x is equal to, it looks like we had five y squared over z. All right, great. The last thing I wanna do is answer the question asked to me. What was x when y was 10 and z was 25? Again, I had an incomplete ordered triple. So for step four here, I wanna find out x, that would be five times, all right, y squared would be 10 squared. I'm not gonna to forget to square that 10. Oops, let me scooch that up. Looks like we can't quite see it anymore. All right. And, sorry, so we had five y squared, oh, divided by z, so I'm gonna divide by 25. So let's see, 10 squared is 100, 100 divided by 25 is four, and four times five is 20. So that tells me x is equal to 20. 
oops, I just wrote 10, not sure why, but let me go ahead and fix that. So the answer to this question is x is equal to 20, okay? So with that, with that idea of joint variation, we're gonna flip the page and we're just dealing with word problems from here on in. Joint variation, different letters, word problems are favorite. Okay, I will see you in a bit, bye.